Greetings from Calgary. I uh, had a look at my Gadgeteer videos and realized that I didn't have any video showing how easy it was to use motors and such with Gadgeteer, so I thought I better correct that uh, oversight here tonight. So I'm going to do a couple videos. I'm going to tonight we're going to do uh, DC motors. I'll do another one on stepper motors and another one on servos, and I'll toss in some pulse counters and uh, and encoders along the way. So tonight we're going to talk about how to uh, how to build a device uh, with Gadgeteer that drives a, a Tamiya dual uh, motor uh, setup here. Uh, this costs about ten dollars. It's really common. Everybody that kind of does their first robot or rover or whatever, this is uh, a very common uh, starter kit sort of thing and uh, it has a variable you can configure the transmission for different uh, ratios and such so it's it's actually pretty good so let's hop into uh, into uh, Visual Studio now the Gadgeteer uses the uh, .NET framework which is open source Gadgeteer is open source and you can use uh, these with uh, with the free versions of uh, Visual Studio and stuff so we're going to go in here and we're going to start up a new uh, project. We're going to select uh, that's a Gadgeteer app. I'm going to call this Motor Test. And we're going to create that. It's uh, then going to ask us, we're going to say, well, we want to use the .NET 4.3 framework. And then it shows us the uh, different uh, main boards that I have. And uh, we're going to use the uh, Serbius. So now, while it's off creating this, I've had some people ask me when I do these if I could mention how much uh, the different components cost. And so, the Serbius main board is uh, about 24 bucks. So now we'll uh, we'll go in and we'll add some modules. So we go into the toolbar, the uh, toolbox, and so you can see here's uh, my main boards and stuff, and then here's all the different modules and such that I have. And so we're going to start off. Um, we want to be able to have somewhere to display how much power and what the pulse uh, call, uh, pulse width modulation frequency is. And so we'll pick a character display. We'll th have that on there. And then we'll uh, come down here. Oh, I should mention that's about uh, um, the display is about $13. And then uh, we'll come down here and we'll pick the uh, the motor driver. And it's about uh, $23. It uses the L298 chip, which is a very common chip uh, to drive motors with. And uh, then we'll come down here and we'll pick a little uh, power module that also connects uh, our device to our PC. So it's a USB port. So and that's uh, $5. And then I have one of my old uh, Spider Monkey triple slides. Uh, devices that I've uh, written drivers and such for. So let's uh, kind of rearrange this a little bit. That makes a little more sense. So you can see that uh, all the modules are all pre-assembled. I don't have to breadboard anything. I don't have to solder anything, uh, anything like that. You'll also notice on the boards there's l there's a letter beside the socket and that indicates what kind of a socket it is and so um, on the triple slide this is an analog device and uh, so it's got a letter A beside it and then if we look at the sockets on the main board they also have letters on them and so that's how you know which socket to plug everything into. Now sitting there and reading this and trying to match this up uh, slow process. I mean we can just click on the socket and the designer will show us which sockets on the main board that we can plug that into. Or if we want, we can just tell the designer to hook up all the sockets for us. And so it uh, does that for us, clickety split, and there is our device. Like I said, no soldering, no breadboarding, no anything. Now we're going to go write some code. So I'm just going to, in the interests of space here, so re We'll get rid of this stuff here, and we're going to, um, since the, the triple slide is an analog device, that means that we're going to have to pull it for, uh, for whatever the settings are. So we're going to create a timer to do that with. 
and we're going to pull, I think, well, how about we say every uh, 250 milliseconds, so four times a second. And then with that timer, everything in, uh, in Gadgeteer is sort of like an object and it's event driven. So we have a timer object and it has different uh, properties and methods and raises events. So when the timer counts down, it's 250 milliseconds here, it's going to raise a tick event. And so we're going to want to do something when that occurs. And the other thing that we want to do to the timer here is that we just want to actually start it. So then inside the timer event, what we're going to want to do is we want to figure out what the motor speeds and stuff ought to be based on the positions of the uh, sliders on the triple slide. So we'll set this up, oh, lowercase triple slide, so we're going to read slider position, and we're going to say slider 1. Now what we want to do here is that uh, the sliders are uh, from 0 to 1, but I would like, to, uh, for this experiment, I want to have the 0 position in the middle of the slider, so that if I go you know, to the top, that's a positive number, and go to the bottom, that's a negative number, because then I can get my driver to drive the wheels forward and backwards. So we're going to just add a little bit of code here to uh, to give us the values that we want. Now the uh, the motor driver is expecting a, uh, a motor speed between negative 1 and 1. So we're just going to set this up uh, so that it is uh, has the range that we want from negative 1 to 1. And then we'll do that again for the second motor. And read that slider position. And now we want the outside sliders, one and three, to be the motors. We're going to do something different with the, uh, with the middle slider. We're going to use that for the pulse width modulation. We're going to do a little experiment with that. So we're going to create an int. And then we're going to do the, uh, now the, um, the L298 chip handles a pulse width modulation frequency up to 40,000. So we're going to pull out some fraction of that 40,000. And that should be that. Okay, so now what we're going to want to do is with the motor driver module, we have uh, some different methods that we can call and properties we can set. So we can set uh, the frequency. So we'll set that to F. And then we're going to set the motor speeds. Now, there is a stop all, which of course stops the motors. And then with the set speed, it's overloaded. So there's two types of set speed that we can call. So there's one set speed where we can say, well, we give it the, the motor number that we want. We want to give it the speed that we want to you know, change to. And then there's a duration time that over that amount of time, the speed changes to what our new setting is. Now, this is handy like when you're uh, going from full forward to full reverse, you might not want to do that instantaneously might cause some damage, whatever. So you can, you, with this uh, module, you're able to set a duration in which the, the time changes. The default is, uh, I think it's 250 milliseconds per step. And so you get a nice, uh, nice speed change without having to worry about uh, damaging your motors. So we're going to set motor one. Oh. And we're going to set that to M1. And then we're going to say uh, motor driver, and we're going to set the speed for uh, motor 2. And we're going to set that to M2. And so there we are. We've got control on our motors now in, in terms of speed and direction and stuff. Now we uh, also want to be able to say, um, 
show what we're doing. So we got a little character display, two line uh, character display. So we're just going to set uh, that up to show what is uh, what we got. So we're going to clear that off and then we're going to do a print. And we're going to, well, we want to make it look a little better than just whatever. So we're going to multiply that by 100. And then to string, and then we're going to format that just so that we don't overwhelm the device with 9,000 digits of accuracy that we really don't care about. You'll also notice that I'm doing uh, M2 then M1. It's because I want to keep the left right for the uh, for the, um, the the motors and uh, okay and that should take care of that and then we'll hop down to the second uh, uh, down to the uh, second row so that's uh, row one uh, cursor position zero because it's uh, zero based and then we'll do character display print and then we'll just do motor oh, motor driver frequency to string and that is all we need to do and so now if I've uh, not made any typos I should be able to do a build on this and we'll see if I typoed anything and apparently not so we're good to go so now some people have asked me so how, how does you know how do I get my program over to the device now the answer for that is, is Visual Studio takes care of that for me I mean I can do a build then I can do a deploy and, and such and Visual Studio will take care of bundling everything up and putting it over or I can just uh, run in debug mode now before we we go into debug mode let's uh, Let's put a couple breakpoints. This is one of the highlights of using Gadget here is that I have the uh, full power of uh, Visual Studio. I have full debugging capabilities. You know, some of those other uh, device uh, frameworks and stuff. I mean, you're doing a lot with it. You know, flashing LEDs and stuff like that. And that's that's just craziness. If you got a full debugger, it makes it so much easier. So we'll hit uh, start. And we'll see that uh, it, it, the Visual Studio will start, uh, it'll build up uh, the application, it'll round up all the uh, components that it needs to, to load on the device, it'll bundle them all up, it'll uh, load them over to the device and start it up. And so there we are, we've hit our first breakpoint. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll just let this go and then of course it'll run right into our next breakpoint now again like I said it's I mean I could go in here and I could change these values I could set next statements and and such I can you know conditional breakpoints and all so it's really nice to have full debugging capabilities when you build devices so we'll just uh, clear this guy off and then we'll just uh, do a continue and let it run and then we'll come over here and we'll have a look at the uh, actually the device running and so we can uh, you know one way go the other way full speed we can have uh, slow it down so we have control and you know we can have one wheel one way these little cameras uh, I mean they're great they're ten bucks but they're a little noisy so we can uh, we can do quite a bit with it. We've got full control on this now. Now one of the other things that I wanted to show was uh, pulse width modulation. When you uh, when you build devices, I mean CPUs are amazingly powerful. Memories, you know, cheap like Borsch, and storage is is you know cheap, and you know network speeds have gone up. I mean technology has has improved everything so fast. However, batteries have pretty much flatlined for a long time. There hasn't been a lot of improvement in, in batteries. And so when we build devices, one of the things that we say is that power is king. You always have to be very much concerned about, uh, about power. And so when you, when you control the speed of a motor using just you know voltage, 
you know, you're you're kind of peeling off some of that voltage to the motor, and some of that, uh, you know, some of that power goes to the motor, and some of it goes somewhere else. It goes actually to a resistor, or, and it's converted to heat. It's wasted. So I mean, you're basically you're you're wasting a very limited commodity in your battery. So there is another way to control the speed of a of a DC motor and that's to use pulse width modulation and and the way to think about that is if think of it as as someone turning a switch on and off really really quickly you know so you know and you know there's momentum and and such that keeps the motor spinning of course between when the power is turned on and off now when we talk about turning the power on and off we're talking thousands of times a second sort of thing and so if if the power if the, basically the power is on half the time and off half the time, that's you know that's a 50% duty cycle. So the duty cycle refers to sort of what percentage of time is power being applied to the motor. And and the beautiful part about this is that when the power is off, you're not wasting battery. It's you know it's just there. I mean, and so you know the faster you turn it on and off, sort of the more time it it spends off. So, for example, we've set this up. We've got our uh, motor set to about 42%, but we're going to drop our pulse width modulation. We're going to slow it down, and we can see the motors are turning. And then as we turn it up, the motors slow down, and then we can stop the motor. So using pulse width modulation to control your, your speed of your motors is actually uh, way more efficient in terms of your, your power usage. Now, of course, when you want to, uh, to change the direction in which they're turning, well, you're going to have to flip the voltage. And so if we flip the voltage, and then there it's going the other way. Right? And we can make these turn really, really slowly. Like, we can have pretty good control on, uh, on motor speed. So pulse width modulation, if you're doing uh, DC motors, that's something to uh, to consider, and it's also something that's really easy to do with Gadgeteer. So I'm hoping that I've shown with this little demo that running motors and such is uh, really really simple with Gadgeteer, and uh, and so if you're building robots and stuff like that, uh, Gadgeteer is certainly a, a platform you should consider. I mean it's I, I like it because it allows me to focus on the device that I'm making, you know, and, and the, the challenges I'm trying to solve. I don't get distracted by having to stop and, and breadboard up something or solder something. It allows me to keep focused on what I'm trying to do, and it allows me to turn out prototypes like crazy. I've built hundreds of devices with, uh, with Gadgeteer. And... Uh, so I'll put all the links for where you can get the modules, the source code, and everything down below uh, so you can have a look at it, uh, experiment with it, use it however you wish, and, uh, and happy gadgeteering. See ya.